Hello and welcome to another video. Previously uh, I did a video about saxophone and electronics and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great fun. Uh, I think back then I might not have been using any loopback instances. I can't actually quite remember what I recorded that time around because it was more of an improvisatory kind of thing. And I thought this time, um, much I'm sure to your upset uh, I will be playing some clarinet with electronics and I'm sure there'll be some purists out there on the clarinet who'll be very upset to see this but I think most people would think it's probably quite fun um, and basically what I thought I would do with this I've had some real problems with main stage because basically I want to have much more control over the MIDI and this isn't that main stage doesn't allow you to do it. You can set up as many faders and buttons as you like, you know, within reason. Um, the problem is that when you're playing a saxophone, obviously if you need to go take your hand off the saxophone or the clarinet to change some faders on your main stage display, I've got my Mac here. I know you can't see that. Um, the problem with that is that you then lose half the horn, basically, you can only play with your left hand. And uh, a clarinet in particular, it's impossible actually to play with your left hand. It is almost totally impossible. Almost, but not quite. Um, in fact, Yeah, that's that's about what you can do, um, and it's yeah, it's just horrible. Uh, so basically, the problem I have is, well, actually, here's a question to anyone who knows a lot about saxophone or, or live instruments and MIDI electronics: Is there a company that makes like a pedal board or a pedal box thing, a stamp box kind of thing, where you have like maybe like ten MIDI faders? That, you, that are just large enough for you to control with your foot. I don't mind having to be quite precise. I don't mind how small the faders are, as long as you can move them with your feet. Um, and then a, maybe a bunch of buttons on the other side or a bunch of latching pads um, for you to turn parameters on and off. So for example, being able to turn on a reverb plugin or turn off a, a distortion plugin or something. And with the faders being able to adjust like the, the volume of different buses and you know, different parameters within uh, audio effect plugins. That would be really helpful. If anyone knows anything like that, please put it in the comments because it would be an absolute lifesaver. Anyway, so I thought the way I should combat this is obviously by using uh, a loop. Um, so in main stage, you've got a, th a thing called loop back that you play into and you can create a loop that just repeats over and over again and you can record over the loop and it's fine. And I thought I could, I could make use of that to try and fill the space whilst I move the occasional thing on, on the, you know, the occasional change the parameters of, of the sound essentially. This might get monetized by someone who owns the copyright, but this is, this is a parody of this track, not a parody as such. Um, but it draws influence from a track. So I think in, in terms of copyright, I think it's actually kind of within the realms of fair use and I'm not monetizing this. So hopefully it is within the realms of fair use. If not, someone's gonna make some money off of me. <laughs> Okay, so now we start. Thank you. 
really tiring. Nice. There might be um, a huge amount of distortion on that. I think I had a compressor on a different instance of this session. Uh, but basically, uh, well, it's basically just limiting everything to stop it peaking. And I think there are some moments there where there was probably a, a crap ton of distortion. Uh, so we'll see if I can actually keep any of that. Hey, it's Aiden from the editing sort of future here. Um, I said there that there was a crap load of distortion in there, but actually there there was, but there, there wasn't really. Uh, what I was talking about then was unintentional distortion that is created by the signal peaking more than zero dB, which didn't happen then. The limiter slash compressor was actually on in the signal pathway, but I just didn't see it when I turned off the recording. Um, so it's okay. That What you heard there was as I envisaged it sounding. The distortion in all of that was totally intentional. So that's fine. But yeah, thanks for watching if you're still around here at the end. Um, and if you do have any suggestions for like external MIDI controllers that I can use with my feet rather than having to like reach over and stop playing properly uh, that would be really great so uh, yeah thanks for watching and you know as always have a great one and if you have any suggestions for what you might want to see me do in the future please you know put it down in the comments and of course if you enjoyed the video please you know give us a like uh, and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one so yeah thank you very much i'll see you soon Thank you.